it's the pastor's heart and Dominic Steele and thanks for joining us and all eyes on Victoria this week our guests are Stephanie Judd Neil Chambers Tim Grant and Pete Sorensen and we are touching base today with four Victorian pastors about the controversy that's erupted in Australian national politics around the chair of the city on a hill church Andrew Thorburn over his appointment and then almost immediate resignation from the position of CEO of the Essendon Football Club. The controversy was over two sermons at City on a Hill from 10 years ago, quotes of which were accessed by Melbourne's Herald Sun and then splashed all over the front page of the newspaper. And as a result, everybody this week has been talking about City on a Hill. The Premier of Victoria weighed in, the federal opposition leader responded, comments from faith leaders everywhere, the Roman Catholic Archbishop, the Anglican Archbishop, Presbyterian leaders from across the country and Muslim leaders. Our guests on The Pastor's Heart today, Stephanie Judd, she's a senior member of the leadership team at City on a Hill, and a range of other evangelical leaders, Neil Chambers, who has for decades been a senior leader in Victoria's Presbyterian Church and is also senior pastor of Bundora Presbyterian Church. Pete Sorensen is the Victorian team leader for the Australian Fellowship of Evangelical Students, and Tim Grant pastors Grace Christian Community Church at Box Hill South in Melbourne. Before we go to our panel, here's a little excerpt from City on a Hill yesterday of Senior Pastor Guy Mason's statement to his church. Uh, of course, as many of you know, the media made links to our church. And uh, after a journalist found some quotes from a few sermons, uh, we were front page news. The quotes in question uh, were from a sermon by myself on the topic of pro-life uh, the other was by our own Andrew Judd uh, on the topic of homosexuality. Uh, these quotes made for some great headlines and uh, the Premier decided to double down in a live press, con uh, press conference. Our Premier says, those views are absolutely appalling. I don't support those views, that kind of intolerance, that kind of hatred, bigotry, it is just wrong. Uh, I was asked how I felt about Dan's words. Was I offended? Uh, and I said, no, uh, I wasn't offended. I was disappointed. I was disappointed. Uh, the Premier of our state uh, has a right to uh, express his views and his opinion. Uh, but I don't think his words were particularly helpful or wise. Uh, I think we need leaders, particularly at this moment in history, we need leaders who can model true diversity. Leaders who can take time to get to know people, to enter in, to understand, and to work for social harmony. I want to be uh, clear and say, as I have said throughout this week, that the particular reference to the Holocaust was unhelpful. I didn't intend it to be inflammatory. I was wrong. I am sorry. Ten years on, I would use different words. The essence of that particular message was that Jesus is for life. As believers... We hold to the view that all life is sacred, that Jesus is the author of life, he is for life, and that life begins at conception. I also want to say that despite the labelling of our Premier, we are not homophobic. We do not hate people. We love all people as God has loved us. We are a Bible-believing church. So this means that we see marriage as a gift from God that he gave us to be enjoyed between one man and one woman. In the covenant of marriage. That's God's gift to us. That's a biblical conviction that Jesus himself testified to. We hold that conviction. Here at City on a Hill, as you've heard me say before, we are a church that wants to hold Christ-like conviction 
and Christ-like compassion. That is Guy Mason, the senior pastor of City on a Hill, and it was a gutsy, biblically faithful, compassionate and super impressive presentation from him yesterday. Stephanie Judd, if we could start with you, um, I have two questions that I want to begin with. Your pastor's heart this week, because as a member of the City on a Hill team, um, it's been a range of emotions. But just first, how was church yesterday? Because I spoke to your husband, Andrew, just after church yesterday morning, and he said he was in tears at points. Yes, as did I, Dominic. It was an incredibly moving time uh, for, for many reasons. I mean, in, in many ways, uh, it was the same as it is every week. We open our doors uh, and we preach the gospel and we welcome anyone who would love to come and hear about the life and love that there is to be found in Jesus. So in many ways, we, we, we did yesterday what we do every week and we sing and we worship and we open the word. Um, but of course, in many ways, it was a very unique and powerful time. Uh, there was a sense really of incredible unity, uh, incredible love, a great zeal and passion for Jesus. You know, I think we, we see, don't we, throughout the ages of when the church is under pressure, uh, there is a great work of God amongst them. And I felt that, we felt that. Uh, there was so many hugs. There was, you know, the worship was loud. Um, the, the passion for Jesus was there. And there was just a real clarity about who we are and, and who we're called to be in this world as we continue to hold out the word of life with, with great boldness, uh, with great love, and indeed with that call to continue to shine the shine the light of Christ into the dark world. Tim, you were saying you were praying for City on a Hill yesterday at church as well. Yeah, yeah, at our services we we did, and I've I've really noted a, a spectrum of of responses. There's some people that are sort of oblivious to everything, uh, but there's also a lot of people who are who are feeling quite troubled at the moment uh, and nervous. And and conversely, there are. Others who feel very combative, they're ready to go to war against society or the Premier or, or someone else. And so it's, it's real, a real mixture of responses, I think. Not, not just the church, but across the community. So, look, we're, we've, yeah, it's been a, a delightful to be able to uh, honour uh, what City on a Hill are doing and going through, I guess, at the moment too. Neil Chambers. We, we prayed for City on a Hill. Uh, we prayed for Guy. Um, we were very thankful for Andrew Thorburn's example that tells us Jesus is worth more, more than your job or your reputation. Uh, it was, yeah, we, on the whole, we were encouraged, though people are anxious, uh, anxious about their employment, anxious about the pressures on their children, uh, anxious about the Premier's speech, which I think licenses others to speak hatefully. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Premier's speech. Um, uh, what was your reaction to that, Pete Sorensen? My reaction was disappointment. Um, I think Guy echoed that in his speech yesterday. Um, in some ways, we're not surprised when the world misunderstands us, we who live for uh, the Saviour who died and rose for us and are delighted to live for his name. So it, it's not surprising, but it's uh, it was sadness that our leaders would um, label in the way they he did and just seemed to be a, a lack of attempt to listen or to understand. So, yeah, di disappointment, I think, is the, the category I'd used, how I responded to Daniel Andrews' comments in this, in this area. Mm. Stephanie, um, what was the mood? I mean... It must have come like a bombshell in the City on a Hill offices uh, on Tuesday when you heard that he'd said that. Um, I think I was um, similarly surprised and shocked that the Premier of our state, who uh, claims to lead a, a secular society, a true democratic society, uh, would speak in such a, a pointed and you know, I'd echo Guy's words in an unwise and unhelpful way. Um, as a, a leader of um, our society, um, I would imagine uh, that uh, a leader in your position would have uh, sought his support and uh, his space for a diversity of views uh, that he represents uh, as Premier. 
uh, and seeks to serve people of all different faith groups. And so to see him say such point of view particular one particular faith community, uh, I just think is unhelpful and unwise. And not just for, for Christian believers, but you know, as has already been recognised here for for people of uh, faith all over the state, but also people who just hold deep convictions, uh, which may not be held by anyone. Uh, really, this is problematic uh, for everyone who wants to live in a free, uh, democratic and secular society. Neil Chambers, you're a member of the Victorian Presbyterian Church. Um, uh, the Victorian Presbyterians, along with the moderators of the National Presbyterian Church uh, and the New South Wales moderator as well, have put out quite a strong statement um, uh, of support for City on a Hill. Do you want to just kind of elaborate on that and your feeling there? I have read Peter Barnes' uh, statement. Uh, we were meeting in assembly uh, last week when all this happened, and we have been engaging uh, with the pressures uh, that are being brought upon the church to endorse same-sex relationships for some time. Uh, we feel them in relation to the changes in the Equal Opportunity Act in relation to schools, and we felt them in relation to the Change and Suppression Practices Act. And we think that the Premier is actually making a religious statement and almost establishing a religious test for employment. Uh, in his subsequent statement, he actually made a theological statement. We're all children of God. And so what the Premier is suggesting is that you're not entitled to be employed in a position of responsibility in this state unless, in a sense, you endorse or accept his theology. Now, that is a religious test, and it just opens the door for what we've actually seen, open religious discrimination, because Andrew wasn't tried for his own statements, just his association with his church. Now, that's extraordinary and it should receive a strong response. Uh, we can't have the state establishing a religious test. Uh, I think in the Premier's mind any suggestion that uh, same-sex sexual activity is sin is seen as hateful because in his mind there's almost a direct link between that and the mental health struggles of some young same-sex attracted people. Now that begs all sorts of questions for us. What is the link? Can you respectfully say same-sex sexual activity is sin? Can we have a discussion about what actually makes for human flourishing? Is it turning inward to yourself or is it turning out to God? Now, all those are preempted uh, by the Premier's interventions. So, yes, I think it needs a fairly strong response. Tim Grant? Yeah, it's been. Um been curious that the the Catholic Archbishops come out very strongly and, and even the President of the Islamic Council of Victoria has come out very strongly in support of, of Andrew. Um, look, it's not that surprising that our Premier would say what he what, what he has said. I, I don't think, I, I don't think any of us are, are all that shocked. Um, it is pretty sad though and um, one of the, the things I think perhaps us leaders have a a part to play is in is in equipping our congregations to speak about uh, sin and sinners in a way that's deeply compassionate, uh, because I think one of the worries that people are feeling, uh, certainly my congregation, is the conversations they're going to have this week at work around the water cooler, and I I think there's I think we perhaps need to model to them how to speak about sin in a way that it is, is profoundly inclusive. Uh, you're a sinner, you're right at home amongst us. We're all sinners and God loves sinners. And, and so to challenge perhaps that, that narrative that I think the Premier has 
are bought and perhaps society has bought as well. How are you thinking about this, Pete Sorensen? I think um, similar to Tim Grant, understanding and wanting to make clear there's no us and them, there's just us. And God, in his great kindness, has sent his one and only son to die for us, uh, if we put our trust in him and as our risen Lord. Um, I think the other thing I want to... I want to keep encouraging the students who we care for and encourage is to help them keep being clear on the yes uh, that uh, feeds, if you like, and draws the sharp line against our nose. So God has a, a wonderful yes to humanity, to life, to flourishing. Um, he's demonstrated his love for us in the Lord Jesus. Uh, we can trust him. And he has a yes to the beginning of life. He has a yes for the end of life. He has the yes for our sexuality in life. And it's his profound yes to, to life in the way that he's designed it that helps us, I think, understand rightly the no um, that he, in his wisdom, calls sin. So I think that there's some of the, the thoughts, Dominic. Um, Stephanie Judd, you and the City on a Hill team must have been significantly encouraged by these different state leaders, statements from faith leaders around the place and, and people saying, I mean, I was just reading in my um, quiet time this morning um, the line about from the Apostle Paul writing to the um, Philippians and, uh, I mean, I'm thinking he's in jail when he wrote this, in jail for Jesus, and uh, he wrote... Um, I'll hear that you're standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened in any way by your opponents. And uh, and I was, I mean, I was reading that, thinking about you guys, and uh, and thinking actually, I've seen remarkable unity across the evangelical spectrum of Australia, saying we want to stand with you at this point. Dominic, it's been absolutely incredible, you know, and I, I think uh, whilst the words of our Premier are, are somewhat confronting in terms of what it reveals of our not-so-secular society after all. What has been encouraging is to see, uh, within this moment, uh, the vision and the identity of the church is clarified. You know, of course, do not different denominations exist for a reason. There are differences amongst us. We all differently on different theological issues, but most fundamentally, we are one in Jesus, and we stand as one in Jesus. And Yesterday, we all met in our, our church families and gatherings to do the same thing to proclaim Christ, to hold fast to him, to hold out his word of life, knowing that he is alive, he's active, uh, and he's at work. He continues um, to send forth his gospel, continues to bring life in the place of death, continues to build up his church, uh, and to see um, and to be reminded of our shared unity in that. And thank you, uh, I would say to everyone, all the churches, individuals out there who have you know, sent in messages of support and prayer and prayed for us yesterday and encouragement and have been courageous and stepping out and themselves making statements. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's been a beautiful vision of who the church uh, really is. And I would also say um, helpful in opening up a conversation more broadly. What is it that Christians actually believe? You know, I think part of this is uh, what people heard, you know, some teaching from the city on the hill and, um, and perhaps initially thought well, maybe we're this kind of outlandish, out there, isolated, crazy group. Um, but to have actually other Christians say, you know, actually, in the traditional views, they're an Anglican church, or, you know, Catholics and even the Jews of it uh, would hold. But of course, denominations, um, Christian denominations all around this nation hold to traditional views from the Bible about marriage and about life. Um, and I think that's been an awakening moment for our society. Be like, hang on, you. Is this what Christians believe? And for us to have conversations. So I'm hopeful that this will open up conversations between Christians and our society, diverse society more broadly, about who Jesus is, what we believe, and, and how we actually engage with the scriptures. Stephanie, has Archbishop Freer actually, the Anglican Archbishop of Melbourne, has he been in touch with your team? Yeah, yeah he's been a wonderful support in this last week, and uh, we're incredibly grateful. Um, I'm sure you would have seen a statement that, that he put out. Um, uh, as, as you mentioned, you guys are uh, Archdeacon in the Anglican Diocese of Melbourne. And um, and so, you know, we thank yeah, for your uh, support in this moment and for standing with us uh, in this time. It's been a, a, yeah, a great question. But he has actually been in touch with you. Yes. 
Yes, it's right. Really well, that's good to hear. I felt, it, I mean, I won't put you on the spot on this one. Um, uh, I felt disappointed in his response compared to the response of the um, uh, Roman Catholic Archbishop. Um, I, I was reflecting back to a decade ago when I was in a legal problem in a civil case and um, with a parishioner and the Anglican Archbishop here was firmly and clearly in support in, in, in much the same way, much the same words as Archbishop Porteous. Um, not, well, not the same words, it was a different situation, but, um, but I really powerfully felt his support and endorsement. And uh, I felt, um, I don't know, I felt Freer could have been as clear as common solely and that would have been good to have heard. But we, we'll, we won't put you on the spot there, Stephanie. Where does it leave us in terms of religious freedom, Neil? Uh, I think we are as free as we were before. I don't think this is any restriction on our freedoms uh, to preach or to speak the gospel. I think the issue is more religious discrimination and it creates the opportunity for that to become more overt and for people to then self-censor because they're anxious about their employment. But we ought to be clear, we're as free as we were the day before he was sacked. And the important thing about religious freedom is using it. Uh, we ought to be talking about Jesus. Uh, we ought to be talking, as Peter says, about the yes, about what makes for human flourishing. Uh, because it's actually a relationship with the living God through his son. That's what gives us life and hope. So we're as free as we were before, as long as we are not intimidated into being self-censoring. Now, this issue of self-censoring, though, um, it does actually cause us to pause that um, people have been going back examining our sermon archives. And um, yeah, Tim, you were reflecting on that with me yesterday. Yeah, well, our, our, our elders have begun a conversation about what we put online and, um, and, it, and it, it's, it's not easy, um, to be honest. We have different views amongst us. Um, we, we, wanna, we wanna be prepared to suffer for the truth and, and we do the world no favors when we lie to them about what God says is true. And, and so we, and particularly those of us who have property, unlike the city on a hill who have the higher space, we're not, in, we're not on the same, a same danger of losing our ability to meet the other chat. Perhaps there's a role for us to stand, uh, to stand up for biblical truth in a, in a way that others are, are unable to. But there's a nervousness amongst our elders that potentially their uh, lives and careers may be affected. And when we want to be shrewd in that, in that, in that space as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're still trying to figure that out, to be honest, I, we, and we haven't yet. But we, we haven't had that conversation before. I guess it was confronting for you guys, Stephanie, when you heard that they'd gone through your sermon archives, and it was actually one of the sermons was by your husband, Andrew. I mean, there are different ways that one could go. Um, you could say you know, nothing online, and um, you know, the the brief moments for the moment in the room and um, and that's obviously one way to protect against risk. Uh, the other way is to say, you know, we're, you know, what we want to advocate for is freedom of speech. And so we're not ashamed of anything, like, you know, put it all out there and um, be open to, you know, whatever it might ensue. Um, I think there's probably somewhere in the, the middle um, and working out what principles do you have when you think about putting things online. Um, and so thinking about audience, I think, is key. Um, I think, you know, if, if we believe what we have said in the past uh, to be true, you know, that's a first point. If, it, if it's helpful, um, it needs to be helpful for the external audience. And so we need to be thinking about that. Um, and so, you know, we're having that conversation at the moment is, um, well, uh, how often should we review what we have put online uh, historically? Um, maybe that's a good way to go about it every couple of years to think, you know, let's let's look back, let's look at what's there. Obviously, context change, topics change, society changes, people see things differently. 
um, not ashamed of the truth, but uh, continuing to look through uh, resources with that lens of uh, what's helpful for people right now, uh, what are the issues at stake, how are people hearing this, um, and so maybe just setting up regular rhythms where that's taking place um, and we're sort of assessing uh, what's on, online and, and so forth. My reaction was that if, um, if Guy Mason gets pinged and Andrew Judd gets pinged, and I think they are two of the most culturally sensitive preachers I know, then what hope is it is there for the rest of us? Um, you're nodding, Pete Sorensen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's unfair to drag a sentence or two out of context, and I agree you're, you're talking about a church that's worked really hard to love and serve the Lord Jesus with the truth and love and serve their community by telling the truth, and not only that, in all sorts of other ways of compassion as well. So... Yeah, I, I think that's really disappointing. Like, here's the prayer that they actually are listening to the whole uh, Word of God taught, right? And there's going to be a whole bunch of researchers uh, turned to faith by the power of the gospel as they troll through sermons. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's um, – I, I agree with you, Dominic. It's, it's a church that's working hard to proclaim Jesus faithfully and to do it in a culturally sensitive way. And if so, if they're getting pinned, then I think that does leave pause for thought for the rest of us, I think it's a step said to be thinking cl clearly about who's the audience and who is our, or our original audience and who will our audience be online and then being thoughtful about in no way, like Tim said, in no way hiding the truth of the gospel. We want the world to know Jesus is risen. Jesus is Lord. Um, you can find life in him. But being thoughtful about um, how we communicate that in the archives, if this is the new normal. Neil Chambers, what's your thought there? Well, I think... Uh we will have a conversation with the elders, but we, for people like me, I have to think about the purpose of having our sermons archived. Now, I suspect for us, it's just for people who miss out uh, the uh, that week. You know, I don't think anybody, uh, I don't think we've got a kind of an evangelistic footprint with our sermons. So... I suspect that we could just shove them away in some kind of archive because the purpose that they actually serve is helping people catch up on the sermons they've missed in the sermon series. And uh, and that will fall away, you know, after a few months. These issues, Neil, have um, caused you in Victoria um, to have extra impetus for the Gospel Coalition Conference this coming week. Uh, that's right, Dominic. Two churches are feeling the need to bring Melbourne Christians together have generously subsidised Saturday attendance at the conference. It, it was a wonderful gift so that believers in Melbourne who share our views could come together and get encouragement through great preaching uh, from Titus. And we're very grateful to our interstate brothers to come down for the conference uh, to encourage us. Thanks so much to all of you for uh, talking to us today on The Pastor's Heart. My guests on The Pastor's Heart, Stephanie Judd, a senior member of the City on a Hill leadership team uh, in Victoria. Also, Neil Chambers from Bundora Presbyterian Church. Pete Sorensen, the Victorian team leader for the Australian Fellowship of Evangelical Students. And Tim Grant from Grace Christian Community Church at Box Hill, also in Melbourne. You've been with us on The Pastor's Heart, and we will look forward to your company next Tuesday afternoon.